King John was so selfish and cruel that all the people in his kingdom both feared and hated him. One by one he lost the dominions in France, which the former kings of England had held. Men called him Lackland, because in the end he had neither lands nor castles that he could rightfully call his own. He robbed his people. He quarreled with his knights and barons. He offended all good men. He formed a plan for making war against King Philip of France, and called upon his barons to join him. When some of them refused, he burned their castles and destroyed their fields. At last the barons met together at a place called St. Edmundsbury to talk about their grievances. Why should we submit to be ruled by such a king? said some of the boldest, but most of them were afraid to speak their minds. Stephen Langton, the Archbishop of Canterbury, was with them, and there was no bolder friend of liberty than he. He made a stirring speech that gave courage even to the most cowardly. Are you men, he said, why then do you submit to this false-hearted king? Stand up and declare your freedom. Refuse to be the slaves of this man. Demand the rights and privileges that belong to you as free men. Put this demand in writing, in the form of a great charter, and require the king to sign it. So shall it be to you and your children a safeguard forever against the injustice of unworthy rulers. The barons were astonished at the boldness of this speech. Some of them shrank back in fear, but the bravest among them showed by their looks and gestures that they were ready to make a bold stand for liberty. Come forward, cried Stephen Langton. Come and swear that you will never rest until King John has given you the rights that are yours. Swear that you will have the charter from his hand, or that you will wage war upon him to the very death. Never before had Englishmen heard such a speech. The barons took the oath which Stephen Langton prescribed. Then they gathered their fighting men together and marched upon London. The cowardly king was frightened. What do these men want? he asked. They sent him word that they wanted their rights as Englishmen, and that they would never rest until he had given them a charter of liberty signed by his own hand. Oh, well, if that is all, you shall surely have it, he said. But he put them off with one excuse and another. He sent a messenger to Rome to ask the Pope to help him. He tried, by fine promises, to persuade Stephen Langton to abandon the cause he had undertaken. But no one knew the falseness of his heart better than the Pope and the Archbishop of Canterbury. The people from all parts of the country now came and joined the army of the barons. Of all the knights in England, only seven remained true to the king. The barons made out a list of their demands, and Stephen Langton carried it to the king. These things we will have, they said, and there shall be no peace until you grant them. Oh, how angry was King John! He raved like a wild beast. He clenched his fists. He stamped upon the floor, but he saw that he was helpless. At last, he said that he would sign the charter at such time and place as the barons might name. Let the time be the 15th of June, they said, and let the place be Runnymede. Now Runnymede was a green meadow not far from the city of London, and thither the king went with his few followers. There he was met by the barons, with an army of determined men behind them. The charter which Stephen Langton and his friends had drawn up was spread out before the king. He was not a scholar, and so it was read to him, line by line. It was a promise that the people should not be oppressed, that the rights of the cities and boroughs should be respected, that no man should be imprisoned without a fair trial that justice should not be delayed or denied to any one. Pale with anger, the king signed the charter, and then rode back to his castle at Windsor. As soon as he was in his own chamber, 
he began to rave like a madman. He rolled on the floor. He beat the air with his fists. He gnawed sticks and straws. He foamed at the mouth. He cursed the barons and the people for treating their king so badly. But he was helpless. The charter was signed, the Magna Carta, to which Englishmen still point as the first safeguard of their rights and liberties. As might have been expected, it was not long before John tried to break all his promises. The barons made war upon him, and never again did he see a peaceful day. His anger and anxiety caused him to fall into a fever, which nothing could cure. At last, despised and shunned as he deserved to be, he died. I doubt if there was an eye in England that wept for him. <laughs>